Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having a great week, a great weekend, and this weekend is Easter! Which is always super fun and exciting. Um, I personally got an extra day off of work, which was great. Uh, <laughs> so this week I really wanted to celebrate the concept of Easter, and I'm semi-obsessed with um, historical royal traditions, and one of them is the tradition of a Fabergé Easter egg. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Fabergé Easter egg, um, it was something done in Imperial Russia back before um, the revolution given to the Tsars um, by the House of Fabergé. And they are known as the Fabergé Imperial Easter eggs. And if you aren't familiar with them, you should definitely look them up because they are beautiful. Like they're not just eggs most of the time. Um, I believe one's in the shape of the Kremlin, one is a timepiece, some open up and dance, and they're just intricately beautiful, luxurious, excessive works of pure art that are just to die for amazing. And it's something that I'm not sure anybody will ever do again, because um, I guess there really isn't a need for it, but they are just absolutely insanely beautiful. So I kind of started there with that kind of a concept and wanted to kind of transform it from, you know, completely royal to just a celebration of spring and Easter, which, so instead of using like gold and jewel tones. I brought it back into more of like an Easter egg palette of, um, we can't see it now, but you know, blues and pinks and like blue greens, just very light and very springy. And I started off with, um, working out some of the detail of the actual egg where I did this like crisscross pattern and I chose the motif of a bumblebee and a butterfly. And I chose the bumblebee because they're often shown a lot in like royal motifs slash jewelry and I think it just has like a lot to do with this idea of youthfulness and um, honey used to be worth you know more than gold at one point in our history and um, you know it was just this fragile commodity that um, you know, we're so used to in our everyday lives anymore so that was one thing and then another was um, I love the youthfulness and the fragility of the butterfly you know they start off as caterpillars and they transform into something incredibly beautiful but even that thing that's incredibly beautiful is just so fragile and most don't even last a very long time um some a few days some a few weeks and then some transverse the globe like the monarch so it's just kind of you know this this beautiful fragility and strength that i really really love and i do think that those themes really speak to the spring season as well as to the easter weekend of just newness and growth um and, you know, that's one of the main reasons why I chose those two motifs to put on the egg itself. And, um, I chose a blue for the egg because it's one of my favorite colors and, um, this kind of, like, springy robin's egg blue, uh, just screams spring to me. And I really, really love the way that that looks and works, um, with the whole color palette that I chose that you'll see develop as we continue to move forward. Um, and I opted to only show a little bit of the rendering or painting in of the actual egg because if I didn't, this video would have been like two hours long. <laughs> so you'll see at times where, um, you know, bits of color will just kind of like pop up because I didn't want the video to be too long. And if it was just like blocking out color, um, I decided to go ahead and skip videotaping that process and show you more of the detail work instead, which you'll see later in the video. <laughs> so, um, again, this yellow on blue, kind of like the yellow is a toned down version of the gold and the blue is kind of respecting this whole Easter theme and concept and just trying to make sure that um, everything kind of sings together. Um, so I skipped kind of far ahead because I wanted to show more of the details of the flowers, which kind of started being based off of an anemone. <laughs> and then I kind of kept stylizing it and sketching it out. and. So basically my center kind of looks like it anymore, and I chose to go with a very light pink um, because pink kind of represents newness and freshness and innocence in a way, which is, to me, what spring is all about is this rebirth and newness that is there. So I started by laying out a very light colored, just to kind of get the white out, and then went in and layered in a bit darker and a bit darker, and then I used a white, pure white, to add in some of the veining because I didn't want the veining to, I wanted it to be there, but I didn't want it to attract too much attention, um, just to allow it to kind of breathe and feel fresh and easy. And then I went back in with a light gray color to do the center because anemones are traditionally black, but I thought that that would be too garish and too harsh against the later pinks, um, of the background. And, um, 
I did skip over kind of painting the whole background because that would have just taken up too long in the video, but I did choose like a turquoisey blue color to really bring kind of like that spring vibe to the whole piece. And then I also put a light wash of green over some of the leaves that are in the painting, and then a light wash of blue gouache paint over the smaller flowers, which were kind of inspired by a hydrangea flower. Um, and as you can see here, I'm now adding some more and more details to the actual leaves themselves to add a little bit more shadow, a little bit more depth and dimension, and to make them really feel like an integral part of the whole piece, um, and kind of adding those shadows in as well. And then I also used to kind of go for a bit of a darker um, color for the veining, mainly because I wanted it to pop a little bit, but not too much, so you can see that they're really, really thin and very, very simple. Um, because I didn't feel like the illusion of the leaves were really there. Um, and I just wanted to bring that detail out slightly further than it, it had already been developed. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and um, I continue this for a bit longer. Um, and I'm always showing painting the bottom half um, because this painting took me a week and a half to finish. I'm like, oh yeah, no big deal. I'll get this done in a couple of days. And then I kept adding to it and adding to it. And sometimes that happens in the artistic process and you just have to respect it and continue to flow with it. So the last thing I did was really add some details into the flowers, the blue flowers, where I added um, a little bit of darker blue into the center parts of it. I didn't want it to feel too harsh. I wanted it to kind of be kind of that medium attention grabber um, along with the leaves. So that way the border kind of felt like it had a little bit more weight to it. I then used the same gray that I used on the interior of the pink flowers for the interior of the blue flowers. And that was to kind of, I guess, show which flowers were on top and which flowers were beneath because as I was painting it, I myself was getting confused. So if I was getting confused, then I'm sure the viewer would have gotten confused as well. So that's why that part, um, why I decided to do that instead. Anyway. Excuse me. <laughs> My little puppies are giving me some trouble. <laughs> and then the very last thing I did was I painted the base. Um, I decided eventually that I wanted to go with the same color that I had used throughout the egg, top part of the egg with the yellow. For the longest time I was like, should I, shouldn't I? Eventually I was like, yeah, it needs to be that. And then I went back with a darker yellow color to add in some of the original detailing that I had sketched out, as you can see I'm doing here now. And I didn't want the detailing to kind of grab too much attention, and that's why I decided to use just a darker version of the yellow that I had already been using, uh, just to kind of just, you know, add that little detail, make it seem a little bit more royal and regal, but still keeping with that fresh, new Easter vibe. And 